Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel, wishing you a happy to start to this new week of maybe, maybe some new opportunities. Bitcoin been staying in the same range that we have been seeing for, I think, about two and a half, maybe even going on three weeks now. I do expect, however, that really this week, maybe even uh, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, is very likely to see resolution, and we're very likely to be born upon uh, the next sort of 20-ish percent move, whether that be to the upside or the downside. That will be the focus of today's video as to what essentially be looking for for a high probability play in that direction. As again, I do spec suspect that this gets kicked off very, very likely this week. Um, anyways, other than that, my brain is not working as properly as it should be because I was sleeping in a bed with Elsa and dogs last night. And I'm not causing, calling Elsa a dog. I'm literally slept in a bed with a bunch of dogs. And <laughs> and it was nice. And we had a really, really good time. Don't ask anything more other than that. No, more importantly, uh, I do want to once again humbly request that uh, if you do find this content valuable, please do consider liking the video and then also uh, hitting the bell icon as that massively does help the old channel there anyways uh, let's just jump right into it starting off right over here with the daily time frame for the Gaussian channel we're gonna be looking at both spot price action here and then CME a little bit later but on spot price action very 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 eloquently gets the bottom side of the current range at about 26,500 now we have several things coming around that region essentially suggesting that hey look if Bitcoin does start to close below that region extremely likely we do see a much more significant pullback uh probably down somewhere around just below twenty five thousand bucks minimum and personally speaking i do think that there'd be good reason to believe as we'll go on uh at the end of this video um for potentially move all the way down to 21 to twenty two thousand dollars however as long as bitcoin is doing the dance of death right above this region right here again the bottom side of the gaussian channel which is officially at twenty six thousand five fifty um on the index uh you know, hopium does still remain, of course, and technically speaking, more likely to bounce off this region than not. Somewhere, somewhere back around towards the uh, the mean, which is currently hovering around uh, twenty eight thousand um, bucks. Contrast that with CME's Gaussian channel over here. You can kind of see the other side of the token, or the other side of the coin, or the coin flip, or whatever the fuck doesn't matter. But more importantly, on the Gaussian channel, you can see that it's hugging onto the mean band right here. And yes, if it can actually maintain its current closures above the mean band, which is currently coming in twenty six thousand nine hundred keep that number in the back of your mind because that is going to pop up a few more times in this video um you know i would say that that would be a good uh, a good indication that today um or sorry upon today's closure that we're you know that upside is still more likely again as long as bitcoin remains above the mean band right here more likely upside back up to the top side of, of you know this channel which is uh just below twenty nine thousand bucks which um matches up with one of the setups that we had from last week but uh i think that there's just more interesting things to be going over right now of course closing below it not necessarily um uh, a death sentence immediately but if you start to get like consecutive closures below it or especially below the 25 uh, sorry 26.5 region from the spot price action chart that we just looked at uh then yeah um you know bottom side of the channel does become a legitimate area of interest which is guess where low twenty five thousand dollar territory all right sweet so now that we've gone through that we've gone through that um we've got some nice pivots on both sides you can see the range getting you know tighter and tighter and tighter very tight like a tiger but uh 26.5 to the downside versus about 27 to the upside let's just say i'm rounding up here obviously uh let's now go into the hpdr range to see what you know kind of matches up with this and basically all the time frames are kind of matching up with each other right now i'll even go down the four hour time frame we'll get rid of the lark lines for the moment Moment. and you can see again bottom side of the current range if you're looking at lower term time frames is showing about 26,200 or so so closure below there yeah that would be another way of looking at a breakdown if one and two is a lower uh you know a lower term time frame by the same token top side of the current range coming in about 27,700 you know basically even just trading above last week's uh high would be good enough for me to, for uh for looking for you know significant continuation probably closer to 29,000 bucks with a stop along the way maybe around 28.5 or so as we looked at earlier um, but you know good to see that this kind of matches up with what we just looked at and yeah I do think that uh, looking at this on a lower term time frame going to become more and more interesting here actually as this range becomes smaller and smaller and smaller anyways oh I did want to point out that the weekly volatility here um, is at one of the lowest levels that we've seen actually if we reference the HPDR V2 we need a better name for this one caretaker i'm sorry man but maybe like the the hp the herpaderp uh the the herpaderp volatility percentile i think would be the right name or just hvpr 
Oh God, there's just there, there's there's too many damn uh, uh, the acronyms. HPD or <laughs> VP. It's getting too damn long now. It's gonna be like the fucking alphabet mafia coming at you too. Apologies on that one though. But uh, yep, we're we're no better, man. We're no better. And I got a hair transplant, so I'm a trans myself. Anyways, um, yeah. So again, same thing right there. Going into stochastic momentum, I do think that there is something incredibly interesting here on the weekly. Uh, the weekly pivot for stochastic momentum has moved down significantly. Um, before it was well above 30,000 bucks. Now it has come down almost more than 1,500 bucks uh, from last week to this week and showing 28,400 as the current pivot to force things back up and maintain the bullish control zone right here. So again, that's another reason why I do say that, hey, look, uh, we very likely get resolution on this week because if it's going to be to the upside, we probably see this pivot met um, to just just to maintain the bullish control zone, uh, and of course to the downside or just you know continue to re remain below that region. But twenty eight four coming down significantly right there again. If Bitcoin just pop back above that region uh, this this week, play out some of those upside setups. Very very good indication we're going to see a you know significant continuation to the upside, um, you know well into the thirty thousand dollar territory. But until then. Momentum remains to the downside. Um, daily time frame going to be showing upside of momentum as long as Bitcoin's above, which it is not right now, 27,100 on a closing basis. So this one would be uh, on the downside. 12 hour time frame is actually showing upside as long as Bitcoin is above. 26,850. It is literally pretty much right there right now. So not really helping. Should also be known that there is a bit of a regression going on right here from the last few highs. You know, so maybe it does start to curl around. Again, that would be more on the bearish side, obviously. Six hour time frame is going to be showing, uh, you know, fresh upside momentum of Bitcoin close above 26,750. I do not look at this as like a strong indication either which way, or, or certainly not strong to the upside, but not necessarily like convinced about it to the downside neither. Um, but, you know, again, another pivot that comes in exactly where we're at on the four hour time frame 26,850 or so and hourly time frame is going to be showing what is going to be showing upside above uh, 26,600 or so so we really don't see anything that's like super obvious between these time frames um, we can just see where those major pivots are I'd really be going off of you know the ranges that we looked at earlier that is uh, a lot more helpful in this particular endeavor as uh, we look for resolution on this same range um, anyways, uh, yes, we've gone through that. We've gone through that. I did want to go over now. Um, yeah, I wanted to go over. What should I go over first? I actually want to go over this first. It's something that I brought up on yesterday's video, um, but uh, I wanted to look at gold. So Bitcoin and gold have had a pretty strong correlation correlation with each other, um, basically, ba basically since November. You know, and and, and yes, most marks been kind of doing the same thing as well. But especially Bitcoin and gold because they're playing off a similar narrative uh, more recently with the banks failing, right? And so if I am looking at gold right here, it's a lot more of an easy chart to be reading than Bitcoin. Uh, looking at gold, it's come back up to the same range highs that has been, uh, you know, testing since August of 2020. That's, you know, this would be March of 2022. And then, of course, uh, more recently in May of 2023. And upon that, it has printed three drives of bearish reverence come off that last high. And it's the weekly RSI kicked out of the bullish control zone right there as well. So I look at that as a damn good indication. This one's very likely going to come down um, in the following weeks or months. Uh, I, I don't think it's bearish. I, I do think that ultimately it will actually bust on through and make new highs. Um, you know, but not before, you know, correcting back down, maybe close to like 1900 or, uh, or, or even into the mid 18s, um, if things get a little bit more crazy. So if you do still look at these assets that's correlated, I do look at, uh, you know, that would be a greater indication that Bitcoin is actually more likely to pull back here um, first. Uh, but this is more of a hypoth hypothetical thing. Personally speaking, I don't like doing these sort of analyses, but I understand that a lot of people out there, you know, just generally, uh, I don't I don't know why, but people like this kind of shit. Um, like these kind of, these these type of analyses. Here, I'll even do this for the old, uh, for, for my Twitter manager, because um, he'll love this for engagement. But we'll just put a Bitcoin chart on the, uh, you know, on the, you know, on the other side. Oh, God damn it. I done goofed. <laughs> oh, fuck me. All right. I just want to put on this chart. Uh, apologies on that. Okay, here we go. New price scale. Yes, that's what I want. Yeah, and you can see, yeah, okay. They have been playing together, uh, you know, pretty much in lockstep, um, I would say, starting around March of 2022. So a little bit more than a year ago now. Uh, very, 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 very similar right here. Um, but, you know, my point is, is that Gold is a lot more of an easier chart to read and very likely does pull back here or continues with the pullback. So does that mean that Bitcoin does as well? Uh, well, that would be on, on that same side, yes. Um, so I'll just take that off for right now. And what we'll do is we'll go into 
the two day time frame setup. And this is the big one because it can give, really give us areas of interest upon resolution for this whole, you know, uh, consolidation that we've been looking at um, for a while now. And the two day time frame again, it's a volatility versus stochastic momentum setup. We just got another closure last night and we're seeing pretty much exactly what we want to be seeing right now. Volatility is expanding. Um, you know, could you, could you make an argument that, um, you know, we want to see another closure just to make sure that it's really, really expanding. I guess if you're super conservative, but in this case, I mean, we do see, you know, very clearly, uh, you know, an increase on the moving average right there um, as volatility, you know, expands off of the 10 percentile number. And those sort of expansions have correlated in the past with, you know, an average move of like 27 percent, um, you know, on the lower end, upper teens on the on the higher end, mid 30s, essentially. And the direction of the stochastic also has been correcting the direction um, of the volatility expansion about 81 and percent of the time. And from the actual, you know, official expansion it takes about 19 days to find that, uh, you know, that next major high or low. So right now, the two day time from stochastic loss order is actually pointed to the upside, I believe. Indeed, it is. And the current pivot is 26,650. That is closing tonight. So if Bitcoin does close below that level tonight, that would be a damn good indication we're going to see, you know, that next major move to the downside. Again, areas of interest, as far as I'm concerned, is just below 25. Then you got um, uh, 21 and 22, basically. And, uh, and if Bitcoin can remain above it, you know, is that going to be like super conclusive? Uh, well, I guess I guess it would look a lot. I guess it it'd be a lot better than than uh, than anything but i really want to see bitcoin get above the current range highs you know at minimum needs to close today above like twenty seven thousand bucks obviously that would simultaneously ma maintain it above the current pivot at 26650 um uh, with you know again a closure coming tonight um but uh but ultimately a lot of you know a, a big day essentially coming here and i really want to see i'd love to see resolution before then like if we saw bitcoin resolve the current even short-term time frame range to the upside that would be a damn good indication hey we're going to see this one really take a nice leg up um you know over the next few weeks here into kind of like early maybe even mid-june basically and, and if it doesn't well downside yeah will be more likely so to the upside areas of interest are basically between about 34 to thirty five thousand bucks um again not all in the same day but you know over the next few weeks and uh that's essentially what i'm waiting for as far as the greater picture and i think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video i just want to give a quick shout out uh we won't go through the full buy bit show but i just want to give a quick shout out to their decentralized exchange arm called apex i know a lot of people are uh fearful of kyc for whatever reason it may or may not be valuable to you um, but i do have an affiliate link in the description below and also in the pinned comment section um, that will award you five percent off of your trading fees uh, for the entirety of your life's accounts on apex all right sweet I think that is good enough for today. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow where there'll be probably hopefully a really, really big update, maybe latest Wednesday. All right, take care.